<laughs> we continue. Let's go. Now we're going to Moshe Rabbeinu's mission statement. Page 154 in the All Hebrew and the All English. It's verse 17. Okay? No matter how, no matter who thought of the mission, no matter what God's position is about this mission, right now Moshe is charging them with what to look for. What, let's read the, uh, the Psukim as a general group. There are more, well, there's one more all English sheet here for those that would like. All right, let's read the mission statement, and then we'll go back and take the Psukim apart. So verse 17, Vaishlach Hotam Moshe Latour Teres Kanaan. Chapter 13, verse 17, Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. We have never dealt with the different verbs that we have discovered, Latour, Lachpor, Laragel. If we ever, ever get to Hirsch's very unique understanding of this entire episode, he touches on that. The odds of that happening before Pesach are poor. Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. And he said, Go up the Negev, go up to the mountain. And here is what I want you to look for. Watch. Uriitem et ha'aretz mahi. See the land, what it is. Vet ha'am ha'yoshev ha'leha. And the nation that dwell on it. Hechazaku. Is it strong? Ha'rafeh. Is it weak? Ha'ma'atu. Is it few? Imrav. Is it many? Umaha ha'aretz asher hu yoshev ba. And what is the land that the nation sits on? Hatovahi, is it good? Imra'a, is it bad? Umahe arim asher hu And what are the cities that the nation are dwelling in? Habamachanim im b'mib sarim. Are they open cities or fortified cities? Umaha aretz. And what is the land? Hashmenahi, is it fat? Imraza, is it skinny? Hayeshba eitz imayin. Is there a tree in the land or not? The hit chazaktem, be strong, ulokachtem mi priharetz, and bring from the fruit of the land. And it ends with, hayamim yamei bikoreo navim. This happened during the time when the grapes were ripening. Lovely. Excellent. By the way, tradition tells us that general, tradition tells us that when did this story episode take place? What time of year? Tishra. Tishim of time, right? Tradition says that this spy is going to make a tishim of Right, excellent. When do grapes ripen in Eretz Yisrael? Go check that out. Okay? Not tishim. What? September. Right. So it's a slight technical problem, but that's okay. Now, so let's look at it again. You will have noticed there were a lot of questions Moshe asked. Even at a superficial glance, it would seem some are slightly repetitive. It's a funny mishmash of questions. So let's look at them again. Pasuk Yudches. Uve'item et ha'aretz mahi. We're going to read it again so you hear them all. Think in your head. Uve'item et ha'aretz mahi. See the land, what it is. Et ha'ama yoshev alea. The nation sitting there. Hechazaku ha'afeh. Are they strong or weak? Ma'atu imrav. Are they few or many? In the land that they're living in, is it a good or bad land? What about the cities? Are they fortified or not? What about the land? Is it fat or is it skinny? Is there a tree there? Be strong and bring back the fruit. So, let's take it apart. See the land, what is it? What's the obvious question you want to ask about that? What do you mean, what is it? Yeah, yeah. What could it be? Let's do possibilities. What, what could he mean by what is the land? Could mean is it fertile or not, right? Is it a, is it, is it a, remember, we, we, in our hands, we have to play the two positions. Was the mission a military mission, or was the mission, is it a good or bad land mission? Rashi, keep in the back of your mind, because we're going to do the story Rashi's way first. According to Rashi, the, what was the purpose of the mission? No, no, no. According to Rashi, it was whether it was a good or bad, that's why God was ticked off. Right? Because God said, what do you mean it's a good or bad land? I told him it's a good land. Well, they got to go look for it for him. Right? That's why most of you verse psychology. Yeah, check it out. You go here, go there. You look, look anywhere you want. Like a guy saw like a donkey, take a chest drive it, da 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 Oh, well, he's so confident. It must be great. Right? Right? That was the Rashi's approach. Also remember another Rashi. According to Rashi, why was this story specifically juxtaposed to the story of Miriam? What did we learn last week? 
because what was Miriam's sin? Lashon Hara. The spies didn't learn from that sin, and they too spoke Lashon Hara. Meaning Rashi's telling us their sin is going to be speaking poorly about the land. It all fits nicely. According to Rashi, the purpose of the mission was, is it a good bit land or not a good land? Which is like God was so upset about even them wanting to check it out. So with that in mind, let's keep in mind what Moshe is asking them if we're, taking, if we're learning the story through Rashi's eyes. Can't they deal what we're doing? So what exactly? Our biggest problem is Umaharis Mahi, what is the land? Now what does it mean, Mahi, what is it? Does it mean is it fertile or not? Why can't that be what that Pasuk means? That's, that's, about it. Ask, yeah. that's verse 20. Shmei He asked specifically, is it fat or is it skin? Right? It says specifically in verse 20. Uma or it's Razah. Check out the land if it's fat or if it's skinny, if there's a tree there or not. So that can't be what it means. Right? So what does it mean? Look at the land. What is it? And in verse 19, it says it again. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know what good or bad means, but whatever it is, it's got to mean something different than the words mahi. Look how many questions we have. In Yud Ches in 18, Ha'aretz, mahi, what is it? In 19, Ha'aretz, is it tova or ra'a? And in 20, the aretz is it shmina or raza? Three different times we're asking about the aretz. Mahi, what is it? 19, tova or ra'a, good or bad? 20, fat or skinny? Three different questions about the aretz. Besides asking about the cities, whether they're fortified or not, and about the people. Hear our problem? Well. So why is it disjointed? Why does it ask all about the Why is it disjointed? Absolutely correct. Why is it disjointed? Whatever those questions are, put them all together. Fine. E -e 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 -e. Now, also in verse 18, Moshe asked about the people. Are they strong or are they weak? Are they many? Are they, are they few or are they many? That's what he asked about the people. It's the only thing he asked about the people. Is that a military concern or a good-bad concern? Your first thought would be... Military. Military, right? But according to Rashi, it's not a military mission, right? Is Russia not military at all, or is it a military good question. secondary? Good question. It might be military or secondary. While you're already going, scope it out. Correct. Correct. So watch fascinatingly how Rashi learns the puzzle. Verse 18, Eta Aretz Mahi. See if you have the English. I certainly hope you know where you are. If you have the Hebrew, we're on 156, the top Rashi, Mahi. Mahi, what it is, says Rashi, Yesh Eretz Megadelet Giborim, Yesh Eretz Megadelet Chalashim. There is a land that raises strong people, and there are lands that raise weak, weak you know, unhealthy people. Yesh Megadelet Uchlusim, there are lands that increase population, the Yesh Memaetet. Uchlusin, and there are lands that decrease population. So according to Rashi, the question Mahi, what was it? What do you want to know about the land? The people are strong or many. As a, as, and the people, if they're strong or many, is a, is the purpose of knowing that is to really tell us what? About the land, fertility. About the land. Is it the fertility of the fruit? No, because we're going to get Shemina Raza. It's the general atmosphere, the, the, the climate, the, 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 the toxins in the air, right? There's a land that just raises strong people. Just, I don't know, fresh mountain air, and the, the people there are just very strong. I mean, the water got to be good, and the, right? the, the climate is good, and the, the, right? whatever it is, it's just strong people, raise strong people. And they're a land that just barely grows there. They're just sort of weak, and they're very susceptible to disease, and they're, right? There's a land that just population just increases a lot. I don't know, something in the water, something in the land, something in the food, something in the whatever, just as the sperm counts high, just a lot, a lot of births, healthy babies, right? Things go, and sometimes, I don't know, it's very sickly and weak, and people die in childbirth a lot, and I don't know what it is, maybe it's just something, maybe it's the toxins, maybe it's the, the nutrients in the soil, the kind of food it produces. But it's not whether there's a lot of food or a little food, it's just the entire climate and being of the land, if, if the population is robust and healthy, it means it's a good, fresh place, the water must be good, the nutrients must be good, environmental, right, an environmental issue, exactly, right? 
environmentally? Is it a kind of lamb? Are people healthy and strong? Or everyone's like sneezing and coughing and weak and sick and allergic and there's a lot of deaths and childbirth and I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Just the animals and everything. This whole place is like a pretty sickly kind of place. I don't know. Maybe some of the water. Maybe some of the air. Maybe, I don't know. Whatever it is. It's just it's, uh, the place that's not a healthy place to live. I don't know, maybe fumes coming out of mines underneath the ground, who knows what it is, but just it's a sickly it's a sickly place. So why were they in trouble for saying that every there were so many funerals there? And we do not yet know yeah. where the sin of the spies are. Okay. Absolutely yeah. correct. That's exactly what we're doing. Our process is, let's see what Rashi thinks the mission okay. is. We're going to see how cleverly Rashi stays consistent, learns the mission consistent with that mission. Then we're going to have to see, so what the heck went wrong? Because lies they didn't tell, right? So what did they, what much what, and hard did they say about the land? They said, so then suppose milk and honey, and they brought back the fruits. So. And there's giants. You want that? Very healthy. There's giants. You want to they're healthy? We told you. What went wrong? Right? According to other people, because they gave political commentary, we can't conquer, they're strong. But Prince Rashi, the issue was the military. Prince Rashi, they was, the mission, purpose of the mission was it a good land or bad land, and the sin is going to be lush and horror about the land. we got to look for that lush and horror. Because if we read it, as we read it simply, we'll say, they didn't say lush and horror about the land. I, they did say we can't conquer it. But that's a different sin. That, 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 that's a separate sin. No faith in God. That's, according to Rashi, that's not their main issue. Right? There might be another issue. But where's their bad report about the land. They didn't say anything bad. They said good. They said the giants and then and, and it's full of milk and honey and they brought back the fruit and that's all, that's all they said. Right? As far as what, whether the land's good or bad, right? That's going to be our biggest problem, rather. Okay? Excellent. So that's what Rashi says. So let's look at the verse again according to Rashi. mahi, what is it? And the second part of the verse explains that. What do I mean, what is it? Check out the nation. Are they strong or weak? That will tell you environmentally, health-wise, climate-wise, what kind of land it is. And Hamatu Imraf. See if there's a lot or, or if there's few or many. That will tell you what kind of land it is environmentally, climate-wise, water-wise, right, health-wise, nutrient-wise. All is it a good or bad land? And the first pasuk is the general overall climate and environment. Okay. If you want, there's another Rashi in there first. We didn't do it yet. 19. Umaha aretz asher hu yoshev baha tovahi imra'a. And the land that they dwell on, that they're sitting on, is it good or is it bad? And then the cities... Are they fortified or not fortified? Now, first half. The land that they're sitting on, is it good or bad? What does that mean? Rashi does not comment on it, I'm telling you, warning you. All right, well, he does. Well, actually, I take it back. I apologize, he does. I apologize. Wrong. What does it mean, hatovahi im ra'a? Is it good or bad? So says Rashi, hatovahi, the ma'ayanot, Right, we skipped the first Rashi on 19, you'll notice. Hatovahi b'ma'ayanot utahomot tovim ubriim. With springs and, and, and underground water supplies that are good and healthy. So according to Rashi, 19, the land is tova or ra'a, good or bad, in reference to what? 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 what is it? So verse 18 was, is it a, what is the land and overall environmentally, what kind of people grow there? Right? 19 is, is it a good or bad land water-wise? And 20, is it fat or skinny? Obviously, that means as far as growing things. And those are your three is according to Rashi, all dealing with, is it a good or bad land? Back to 19. Besides whether it's good or bad, what else does Moshe say? The cities that they're living in, are they fortified or not fortified? According to Rashi, what would seemingly be the obvious problem with this question? It's really military. It's a military issue. I thought the purpose is not really military. Now you can say maybe a secondary, but it's a little funny, because Rashi's been going out of his way 
to make even the most military issue sound good bad. Look at it in context. Start with the top of page 156, or right verse 18. Haaretz mahi, what's the land? Meaning, what's the overall climate? The nutrients. Ha'amayu shevalea, the nation that sits there. How can you tell what kind of nutrients and environment there is? Ha'chazaka, are the people strong? Are they weak? Ha'ma'atu imrav, are they few? Are they many? This will tell you the overall environment of the land, the health of the land. Nothing to do with the military. Ha'aretz asher yosheba tova imra'am, what's the water supplies like? Good or bad? Parenthetically, and how about the cities? Are they fortified or not? And Mars Hashminahi, is it fat or is it skinny? What is it fertile? Are there trees? And Vosepis in the middle, they throw in out of the out of, out, of, out of the nowhere, is it fortified or not fortified? Doesn't fit the flow. It's a different kind of environmental question. If God says you're going to take this land, you say, Great, we'll take it, but let's see if they have problems marauding neighbors. If they're fortified, it doesn't mean they're fortified against us. It means they're fortified against... So you want to say another issue, do they have people that they are afraid of? Is, is it going to be a, 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 a politically difficult land to deal are with? There, right. Are there products worth protecting? Right, if it's fortified, it means that there's some... That there's that other people on it. Such good land. Fascinating. Or is the house Interesting. Maybe gold or whatever. Uh-huh. Very good. Interesting. Other people will say that. You all said excellently. Watch what Rashi does. Rashi flips it. Watch this. We're going back to the Rashi on verse 18, which we skipped. The second Rashi. It says, Hechazaku Three lines out of the Rashi in the Yal Hebrew. If you have the English, it's verse 18, the second Rashi. Hechazaku are, are the people strong or weak? Siman Masar Lahem. Moshe gave them a sign to know whether they're strong or weak. In the Prazim Yoshvim, if they're in open cities, Chazakim Hen, they must be very strong. Shesamchim al Gvuratam, they rely on their strength. Then they'll be Mitzurot, but if they're in fortified cities, Hey Yoshvim, they're sitting in fortified cities, Chalashim Hen, then they must be weak. Is that cool? You know, there are, there are some cities in Eretz Israel that specifically don't have walls around them that are on the edge. They're making a statement that we're protecting ourselves. It's a form of defense, as opposed to a walled system or a fenced in system. Right, interesting. Right. It's the same concept. Same idea. You know, they're telling right. their dangerous neighbors, right. cross this line. You know, we don't have a wall. Right. Cross this line and you're liable. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So, so says Rashi. Right? The whole point of fortified or not fortified is not a military issue. It's that's how you'll know if they're strong or weak people. Now look at verse 18 and 19 in context and tell me the famous problem with that explanation. 